Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video I count down my top 10 favorite Bat Rogues. I remember it took me 3 months to get my first 100 subscribers. Back then it felt like I'd never reach 100 and now here we are 8 months after I started with a thousand subscribers. If I have any advice to any new YouTubers among you, it's to be patient. Things take a long time here. Anyway, I thought I'd celebrate this milestone by doing this special top 10 video. I'm sure you guys have been wondering just who my favorite rogues are. Well, now you'll find out. Of course, selecting only 10 villains was extremely difficult and many great ones that I love will be left out. So be prepared that some of your very favorites may not appear on this list. That probably won't mean that I dislike them though. There are actually very few bat rogues that I am not a fan of. But we all have our own absolute favorites. So if you're one of those people who is easily triggered by other people's opinions, you probably shouldn't watch this video. Just a warning. Anyway, let's dive into it. Number 10. The Mad Hatter Jervis Tetch, aka the Mad Hatter, is one of the weirdest and craziest villains in the Batman's rogues gallery. He's such an odd character, like what possessed Bill Finger to create a rogue based on the Hatter character from Alice in Wonderland. I'm glad he did though, as I love these types of bizarre outlandish villains. The thing about Jervis though, is that he rarely lives up to his full potential. Sure, there are a few good Hatter comics, and he's of course great in the animated series, but I guess it's the idea of the character I really like. To me, he shouldn't be too dark, but colorful and whimsical, yet at the same time, kind of creepy. Number 9. Poison Ivy Ivy is a rare case of a villain who I think works as pure evil just as well as she does sympathetic. We've certainly seen both portrayals, but if I had to pick, I'd say I prefer a sympathetic Ivy. One aspect I love about the character is how she's a complete outsider and doesn't fit in anywhere. She's not human, yet she's not really a plant either. I mean, she's not a flower. So Ivy doesn't belong in Gotham City, yet neither does she fully belong in a tropical jungle. You could say she's kind of the ultimate loner, which is pretty sad, don't you think? I also love how the character often evokes the femme fatale archetype of film noir. Number 8. Clayface 3 Preston Payne, the third guy to call himself Clayface, is an amazing yet fairly obscure villain. My first Forgotten Batman Villains video was about him, and I'll link to it in the description. Payne is one of the most tragic and sympathetic villains in the Bats rogues gallery. A scientist who accidentally transformed himself into a melting monster, he gained powers that are really more of a terrible curse. Love those types of characters. He's also one of the craziest rogues, as he's severely delusional and in love with a store mannequin, just because she's the only person who doesn't die from his melting touch. Number 7. Killer Croc just like Preston Payne, Croc is another tragic freak and one of the most sympathetic of the Bat Rogues. Completely misunderstood and considered a monster because of his bestial appearance, Croc is actually a very gentle soul. All he wants is some peace of mind, but of course he'll never get it. Society and Batman will forever hound him. Croc is also a lot like Ivy. He too is part of two worlds, human civilization and nature, but belongs in neither. He's not fully a man, nor is he completely an animal. Now that I think of it, Croc may be the most sympathetic of all the Batman villains. Of course, there are versions that depict him as an evil criminal, but I don't consider them to be the true Croc. Number 6. Catwoman so here we have another very sympathetic rogue. In fact, Catwoman haven't really been a villain since the 70s. Now she was pretty much always a bit morally ambiguous, but ever since the 80s rolled on, Selina has been portrayed more as an anti-hero than a rogue. She still usually commits crime though, mainly stealing and sometimes even killing. But that's really what makes Catwoman so fascinating. You never really know where she stands. With her adventurous, daredevil attitude, she's also a very fun and exciting character. Then of course you have the on and off Bat-Cat romance, which has become such a staple. I can't really imagine the Bat mythos without it. Number 5. The Penguin 
Oswald Cobblepot is certainly one of the oddest and most unique villains in comics. There's really no other rogue quite like him, is there? His visual design, his personality, his gimmicks. The Penguin really stands out among other supervillains. Some people think that the guy is goofy and a joke of a character, but they're kind of missing the point. Penguin is supposed to appear absurd, but underneath hides the greatest criminal genius who ever lived. Now I prefer the old school theatrical master thief penguin over the modern mob boss version, but both depictions work. He's also become such an integral part of the mythos that Gotham wouldn't feel the same without him. Number 4. The Joker Yeah, I'll probably lose a few subscribers for this. Now I would've put Joker higher on the list if he wasn't constantly shoved down our throats as the greatest, most awesome Batman villain ever. It gets a bit annoying in the end. But to be fair, he's a pretty perfect foe for Batman. They are exact opposites. Batman is grim, dark, stoic and fights for order, while Joker is colorful, cheerful, loves to talk and fights for chaos. He's got one of the greatest visual designs of any fictional character too. That grin, the white face, the green hair hair, the purple suit. There's also something about a villain who can make you laugh at the same time as he scares the shit out of you. Number 3. The Scarecrow just like the Mad Hatter, the Scarecrow is another villain I really like the concept of, but one who's often misused by the writers. Crane does have a larger amount of good stories than Tetch though, but still, the guy has so much more potential. He's the only villain, among the big ones at least, to use Batman's own weapon against him, fear. They really employ the same MO, a scary costume, gimmicks and theatrics to intimidate. His motivations vary frequently, but my preferred take is when Crane's obsession with conducting fear experiments drives him. He's also got one of the best visual designs. I just love the idea of a living scarecrow. Number 2. The Riddler I can never really decide between Riddler and Scarecrow, but I went with this order for now. Tomorrow it may be reversed. Anyway, what's not to love about the Riddler? His smug arrogance makes him one of the most entertaining characters in fiction. Nigma is also a very unique Batrogue, as he challenges Batman on an intellectual level. Plenty of villains are philosophical and psychological adversaries to the Dark Knight, but nobody else really fights Batman in a battle of wits. At least not on the same level as Edward Nigma. He's often also a fairly sympathetic guy, as he's not necessarily malicious, all he's after is to prove his smarts. Plus his design is great and very eye-catching. And now for my favorite Batrogue of them all. Number 1. Two-Face Some of you knew this already, and if you didn't you probably could have guessed it. Two-Face has always been my favorite fictional character, ever since I can remember. I think his visual design is the greatest. There's just something about a guy who's a normal looking man on one side and a hideous monster on the other. Harvey's got one of the greatest origins as well, being a former hero and friend of Batman who then turned bad. I love those types of villains, like Sinestro. Just like Croc and Preston Payne, Two-Face is a disfigured tragic freak who could have been a good guy, but it runs even deeper with Harvey. The character also heavily evokes film noir, with his scarred face, the fancy suits and the coin flipping gimmick. I usually never do runner ups, but I'm gonna do it this one time. It is a special occasion after all. So my runner up is… Man Bat. He's another case of a well-meaning scientist who accidentally turned himself into a hideous monster. I also really like the fact that Man Bat literally is everything Batman only pretends to be. So there you have it, those are my top 10 bat rogues, or 11 I guess. Besides the number 1, this list isn't really cut in stone, it may vary a bit as time goes on, like the exact positioning of the rogues will probably look a little different in a year from now. And like I said, if your favorite villain didn't show up here, that most likely does not mean I dislike the character, unless it's for some bizarre reason the Tenight Man. Anyway, write your own top 10 bat rogues list in the comments and let me and the others know who your absolute favorites are. And of course, thank you all for subscribing. This channel would be nothing if it weren't for you, the viewers. Remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.